Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a hero build series. I am Sylphen and today we are playing Sparrow. A very interesting deck, mathematically perfect. Uh, <laughs> something I am going to consider, uh, hopefully at least, is uh, mathematically perfect. How is it mathematically perfect? Well, I'll explain in a moment. So what I did, ladies and gentlemen, was I simply built a, uh, I built a deck, and I know that that she, um, oop, I wanted uh, several to get his stack there. I know that she deals with attack speed better. She benefits from attack speed better. So I went with an, with an attack speed build, and I built it as much as I could. I only have um, six attack speed upgrades, and the I'm, I'm using them all. I'm using them all in a in two wind carver blades. Now, taking into account all of the stats that you get from um, from from that, I I calculated with uh, how she um, how she uses. Um, how she benefits from, oh goodness, holy smokes, wow. Um, I, I did the math uh, in, in a spreadsheet that I'm going to release in a video soon um, in regards to how much damage she can do and, uh, and etc. Anyways, I calculated how much damage and how much crit um, I needed to best utilize that attack speed and I just did that in this build. So. Uh, that is how it's mathematically perfect. With 15 attack speed in Sparrow, 15 points of attack speed. I'm I'm deeming points of attack speed as um, as one point it equals 5.5 uh, attack speed. How much physical damage do I get to best optimize um, that attack speed? So that is how it's mathematically perfect. I mean it. It, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm being silly, uh, so we're just seeing, really, what I can do with a build like this. So, um, if you have not played Sparrow before, she is quite um, the ranger. She is the typical ranger. She shoots bows and arrows, and uh, that's, uh, that's it. So, very, very um, fun hero in that way, but actually hard to play. Why? Because she has absolutely no mobility whatsoever. She has no ability that helps her escape. She has no ability that helps her slow down the enemy. Nothing. All that she has is her attack ability. That's it. So the very first ability I went with was Q, just to help that Severog there in the jungle deal with that red camp. And then I went with my E, which is... Her passive. So your your Q is rain uh, hail of arrows. Sorry, rain down arrows in an area dealing 20 physical damage over four seconds. Uh, you put it down like this. And the one thing that it doesn't tell you though is that it also procs her passive. So when you use it, it actually builds your passive, which is successive hill hits deal an additional seven physical damage, stacking up to ten times. So here we're gonna really oh he actually misses there. Uh, I missed my Q and I can't hit him at worth a damn. So definitely accuracy is very big for a Sparrow, as you can see, easily taking out to that Twin Blast. So uh, yeah, so her Q is very, very powerful in um, building up your E stacks. So if you can, um, really make sure that you use your Q on the enemy uh, that is preferably, you know, stuck uh, you know, stuck in a root or something to really get a good amount of, um, to just get a good amount of, of, of damage on the enemy. The right click is really, really cool. It's a very long range skill shot, as you can see here. Uh, the longer you hold it down to a maximum of two seconds, I believe, yes, max charges down for t uh, two seconds, it uh, pierces through enemies and is a very long range, 2,500 units. So it's a very good source of poke damage, but for, at, so, at 47 uh, mana, that's basically a quarter, about a uh, 
uh, fifth, about a sixth of her total mana. So you can't really use that all that often. All right, so the very first card here we're going for is the Guardian's Ward. Of course, replacing that Scout's Ward with these minor strikes. Something that I have also uh, calculated, ladies and gentlemen, is that um, you need about 90 to 100 damage on Sparrow in order for any attack speed um, that you add to be better than adding damage. That's the key. Of course, adding attack speed is going to help you in the damage department, but adding physical damage up until about 100 additional damage is actually going to increase your, your DPS more. I've done the math. I'm trying to just make the spreadsheet just not look a little bit better, but I'm trying to find a way to explain it um, better so that uh, it's just more digestible. Uh, yeah, so that's Sparrow. Oh, and her ultimate. We forgot about her ultimate. Pretty cool. I'm not the biggest fan of it. I'm, I struggle to find the... I struggle to find um, the... the value in it. Um, it's... It's called Inner Fire. Bow shot attacks fire a triangle of three piercing arrows per shot for the next 10 seconds. Uh, each, the side arrows, though, only deal 30% damage, but it they do pierce. And I often think that I forget that that pierce exists, and maybe in my head that is exactly um, where that value lies. So in tight in, in tight corridors, in, uh, well, just in any real uh, big team fight where the enemy is nice and grouped together, especially after um, a very good ult from a friendly Fey, say, um, I think that th I think that that ultimate pays off then. So I'm just I th I think that's my experience um, showing through that uh, it is actually quite a val valuable ultimate and quite powerful. I just I haven't really seen it yet. So. That's more me than the character, I'm sure. So I guess really we just stay in this lane, try to farm up as much as possible. You can see that this uh, Brawler's Ward with those three minor upgrades is really helping in this damage department. Let's see how much we can burn down this um, Twin Blast quite a bit. Look at that, oh, about a fifth of his health just in a few, atta a few attacks. The thing that my spreadsheet does not take into account, however, is her passive. It does not take that into account. Obviously, attack speed um, makes her passive much, much stronger as you can attack faster, get more of those stacks. I'm not like I'm not a math whiz that much to try to get that into the calculation as well. Um, but at this point, uh, we're doing 80, and the passive it deals an additional 11. So that is about a little bit over, two, that's 12% increase. So 12, and then 24, and then 36, and then it gets incredibly much, much higher. Um, yeah, so I mean, really, Attack speed is definitely going to be much, much stronger for her, um, for sure, by far. Um, but uh, I, I already knew that. I already knew that when I when I did uh, the math. Not including her passive, attack speed was by far better. So I mean, I don't think that uh, her passive there um, would affect crit that much to boost it above the DPS of it, uh, of an attack speed build. So at this point. Um, I'm, I have to figure out here what I want to go for. Definitely want to go for damage. And you know what? This Blade of Agora has the most damage on it. Because um, I want I want to go for damage because it scales much better here in the early game. Now what I can do is I can get uh, my strike tokens as much as possible here. Um, and just simply get my first Wind Carver Blade and save it for later. So let's do that. I can only get one... Um, so that's really not worth it. Um, I'm trying to get damage here. So, you know what, let's go for this amulet of the veteran and uh, be a little bit strange here and get some major strike. Let's finish this off and then go into attack speed. Um, I need to check, however, how much damage are do we have? Oh my goodness, I'm wasting, wasting time. Let's see. 
How much damage do I have? I'm 65. Yes. So by the time I finish this, we will be in the department uh, where attack speed will really be um, will really be an inc a damage a DPS boost over adding physical um, attack speed. Pushed up the right lane tons, and we were able to really do a lot of damage. Six card points being able to finish us off. Now we are getting there. We are so, so close. Uh, once we get this wind carving blade, we'll be very close. So I think that will be our next card. I was surprised that um, that when you do the math, that is actually the more appropriate way to go. Damage until about 90 or 100 uh, increased damage. That's, I mean, that's, that's quite a bit here in the early game. So with that said, um, I mean, there certainly could be situations where um, getting better, uh, you know, a, a better distribution of, uh, of, of card points here would definitely be better. Um, I don't have, I don't have a lot of upgrade cards, so I'm forced to stick with these, um, with these large three-point upgrades. I would prefer to be getting a lot of one-point upgrades in, at this point of the match, um, but I simply uh, don't. So let's use our ultimate here because we will be able to pierce these guys, so it doesn't look like that ended up being overly useful. Look at this damage here. I should have waited for this moment, so let's go in here. Definitely taking down this Twin Blast. Uh, Steel is going here, so let's try here. Let's try to pierce this murder. This oh, and I completely missed here, right? So, so let's use our Q here to take this out. And look at that. Five complete. Wow, dominated the enemy there. I'm lost for words. I can't even speak. That was quite fantastic. We're definitely doing a lot of damage, hitting very, very hard. Um, I can see now that, um, you know, waiting until now. And then, and then getting the attack speed would definitely be better. Uh, definitely, definitely starting to see that. Um, you know, Sparrow. I think this is this is the right way. I think it really this is the right right way to go. So, see here we got three card points. Definitely could could go back and get that Wind Carver Blade, um, but. I think we need to stay with our team here. Do a push. I'm just simply okay. Retreat, retreat. Yes. So here we go. This um, Murdoch's trying to be cheeky here. Yep. Definitely need to go. Uh, think this. Oh uh, no. Okay. We are good. Let's go back. Spend these three card points. Now that there's a bit of a space between us and the enemy. Get some mana and some health as well. Alrighty, so we're getting this wind cover blade. Uh, this one is the one that has uh, the e more easily accessible attack speed here. So I'm um, gonna leave this one, even though it is, um, yeah. So we'll get this wind cover blade here. Very, very close, 91 physical damage and um, attack speed 118. Okay. Alrighty, we have another uh, Team fight here. Let's see if I load this up. 131. Here comes the Feng Mao. Not sure if he sees me though. But the Feng Mao has um, some armor for sure, but looks like that is not enough. Simply melting them away. Uh, what in terms of in terms of um, ability. Um, in terms of ability upgrades, I would suggest going for your E followed by your uh, Q, not like what I've done here with the right click. Wow, look at that. Dominating the enemy team. Uh, definitely some excellent teamwork done by my team. Um, but again, I think this build is really quite strong. And we'll be able to showcase it once more again as well. So we'll go through the build very quickly here on the deck screen. So here is the build, ladies and gentlemen, always starting off with the ward, especially on Sparrow because she has such limited mobility. No, no abilities, none of her abilities enable her to get away from an enemy 
better. So she definitely needs these ward right to the end of the game. So after this, we go into just damage just just damage after this guardian's ward we went straight into the amulet of the veteran because we really need that damage uh this gives us a little bit of health as well quite a bit here in the early game so that 100 will be definitely good as our seventh card point um right seventh as our 10th, sorry, we're definitely very strong and the greater health as well. So uh, what I would prefer to do, ladies and gentlemen, is get, uh, use these minor, these lesser healths in here. Um, so we can actually certainly do that here. Um, get two, sorry, just get one and I guess um, a minor strike as well. So that there is going to be able to let us get some health in the early game and some damage um actually you know what i think yes no I, I i shouldn't be changing this because i did the math earlier and uh this is how it worked out so there is uh, our first card it it doesn't work out to do a one point uh, upgrades with me i don't have the cards i don't have the upgrades so we simply have to do it like this get the amulet of the veteran then go into this wind carver blade so we can use those one point kinetics um to get them really quick and that three point major then we can start building attack speed so then we go from the wind carver blade again into a amulet of the veteran getting that 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 damage we can't get the attack speed too quickly until until we get more damage so kind of going back and forth a lot of damage here in the early game because that just the math works out that that is better guardians ward Amulet of the Veteran, Wind Carver Blade, the other Amulet of the Veteran, the next into the Wind Carver Blade, then we can go into the Spear of the Rift Runner or, and or the Blade of Agora. I would go into the Spear of the Rift Runner next and then the Blade of Agora um, because crit, it works out so that in the in this balanced um, sort of approach between, well, not balanced, we're heavily going uh, crit that, that, or we're heavily going attack speed, sorry, it works out that this crit actually just keeps us in the same with a true uh, attack speed build. So the, that Spear of the Rift Runner and Blade of Agora um, are, the, are the last cards that we get. This Blade of Agora replaces our Guardian's Ward. So you can only do that when, you know, it's full on team fights. You have the safety of your team to protect you. That is the only time when you can replace the Guardian's Ward with the Blade of Agora. There is the build, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me know down what in the comments below what you think of this. Please like the video if you like it, dislike if you dislike it. Please leave a comment. Like I said, I've done the math with as much attack speed as I have that I can possibly put on Sparrow of all the cards and all the upgrades that I have. I've done the math with the crit and the damage. This gives me the most damage per second. Very excited to see how it works out in the end game, especially because we do have quite a bit of health. 1400 extra health there in the, in the end game should be very nice for a carry. And there you go. So please, like I said, leave a comment. If you please share the this video with the community and of course subscribe. If you found this useful or simply just enjoy the video, I want to be able to do it for you again in the future. Like always, until next time, take care.